welcome everyone. And we also welcome Don Smith, whom you will see presently, who will be leading our Zoom worship service this Sunday as Pastor Peter is on vacation. Don is a member of the First Congregational Church of Heartland UCC, a member in discernment with the Vermont Conference and an online seminary student at Chicago Theological Seminary. She started her theological education through the Vermont Academy of Spiritual Training. The program met upstairs here, and at the end of the first year, she delivered her first ever sermon from our pulpit. Thank you everyone for joining us for worship this morning. Your video and audio will be off, but you will be able to see and hear the service. This is because we will be recording it and want to protect your privacy. When the service ends, we will invite everyone who wants to remain for a Zoom coffee hour. We will invite you to turn on your video and audio at that point. Um, I have an announcement from the Pastoral Search Committee. The NCC Pastoral Search Committee has completed a draft of our local church profile. The completion of this document is a required step in the search process. It is a comprehensive self-study and will be shared with potential candidates to serve as a basis for discussion with them as we move forward. It includes the information gathered from the survey we sent out to you last March and April, input from committee members, and data from our church's records. The next step in the process is to share it with you, our congregation, for feedback. We have two general questions to stimulate your response. Do you recognize our church when reading this document? And is it a valid statement of who we are? You can send email feedback to the committee care of the church office, Norwich Congregational at email. Gmail, isn't it email? But anyway, whatever. Email. You can send it to the church. You probably know where that is. Okay. <laughs> Please join me in the responsive call to worship. We are all one family, made in the image of God. We are all one family, all over the world. We are all one family, each unique, each special. We are all one family, brothers and sisters on one journey of faith. We are all one family, given gifts and talents to share. We are, we are all, all one family, family united in love, united in peace. peace. United in Christ our Lord. Let us pray. In the morning when we rise, and at night when we lie down, and in all the moments in between, O oh Lord, you are there. In the night while we sleep or toss or turn in anxiety, even then, O oh Lord, you are there. You're waiting for us to turn to you. You're waiting for us to look to you. You're waiting for us to make time for you to pay attention to you. Far too often, we are too busy. God, you call us to be still, and we confess that this is difficult for us. We prefer to be active. We prefer to be busy. We prefer to be surrounded by activity and noise. Silence unsettles us. Solitude intimidates us. Reflection rattles us. So we seek diversions and welcome distractions. We fill our schedules to overflowing and yet, and yet, deep within us, there's a hunger that grows and grows. A hunger for silence, a hunger for solitude, a hunger for time to reflect, a hunger for you, God. And the busier we, we get, the more this hunger grows. We feel it, an ache, an emptiness. Grant us, O oh God, the strength of will to feed our hunger to step away even when there are other demands on our time. Shield us from the temptation to put off prayers Oops. and postpone our time for reflection. Drive away the fears that make us shrink back from silence. Teach us how to be still and to know, know you. We pray this day for the sick. Show us how to provide good care for them in whatever ways we can. Bless their doctors and nurses with both skill and compassion. Bless their families and loved ones with patience and the strength to give support. As bodies heal, as let faith grow and relationships with others become deeper. We pray your peace for all who mourn, O oh Lord. Send your spirit to lead them through the valley of the shadow. Fill their minds with positive memories 
and their hearts with comfort and resurrection hope. Protect the poor and weak from the rich and powerful. Continue to guide and sustain us, sustain those who are committed to showing the world a better way, your way. We rejoice and give thanks for your offer of love and friendship, O oh God, for your presence with us and your sacrifice for us. We thank you for answers to many prayers. We thank you for friends and family who are faithful, for people we can call on and count upon when we're stretched beyond our limits. We thank you for the forgiveness of our sins and the new life that we receive through faith in Jesus Christ. And now may we pray to you your prayer. Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses and forgive those that trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. First scripture reading is from Psalm 46, verses 1 through 3. God is our refuge and strength, a very present help in trouble. Therefore we will not fear, though the earth should change, though the mountains shake in the heart of the sea, though the waters roar and foam, though the mountains tremble with its tumult. The second reading is from Psalm 121, verses 1 through 8. I lift up my eyes to the hills, from whence will my help come? My help comes from the Lord, who made heaven and earth. He will not let your foot be moved. He who keeps you will not slumber. He who keeps Israel will neither slumber nor sleep. The Lord is your keeper. The Lord is your shade at your right hand. The sun shall not strike you by day, nor the moon by night. The Lord will keep you from all evil. He will keep your life. The Lord will keep your going out and your coming in from this time on and forevermore. I, I love every summer in the Heartland Church when we step away from the lectionary for the summer and, and speak of children's stories that have lessons for adults. I've done most of Dr. Seuss's stories because he was a great theologian. I never realized it until I started writing these. Um, but for this service, actually for a service earlier in the year at Heartland, I've, I've chosen to speak of The Giving Tree um, by Shel Stil Silverstein. And you've probably all read it to your children or read it to yourself, but I'm going to read it again. Once there was a tree, and she loved a little boy. And the little boy, and every day the boy would come, and he would gather her leaves and make them into crowns and play king of the forest. He would climb up her trunk 
and swing from her branches and eat apples. And they would play hide and go seek. And when he was tired, he would sleep in her shade. The boy loved the tree very much, and the tree was happy. But time went by, and the boy grew older, and the tree was often alone. Then one day, the boy came to the tree, and the tree said, come boy, come climb up my trunk and swing from my branches and eat apples and play in my shade and be happy. The boy said, I'm too big to climb and play. I want, thing, I want to buy things and have fun. I want some money. Can you give me some money? I'm sorry, said the tree, but I have no money. I have only leaves and apples. Take my apples, boy, and sell them, in the, sell them in the city. And then you'll have money and you'll be happy. So the boy climbed up the tree and gathered her apples and carried them away. And the tree was happy. But the boy stayed away for a long time. And then one day the boy came back and the tree just shook with joy. And she said, come boy, climb up my trunk and swing from my branches and be happy. I'm too busy to climb trees, said the boy. I want a house to keep me warm, he said. I want a wife and children, so I need a house. Can you give me a house? I have no house, said the tree. The forest is my house. But you may cut off my branches and build a house and then you'll be happy. So the boy cut off her branches and carried them away to build this house. And the tree was happy. But the boy stayed away for a long time. And when he came back, the tree was so happy she could hardly speak. Come boy, she whispered, come and play. I'm too old and sad to play, said the boy. I want a boat that will t take me far away from here. Can you give me a boat? Cut down my trunk and make a boat, said the tree, and then you can sail away and be happy. So the boy cut down her trunk and made a boat and sailed away. And the tree was happy, but not really. After a long time, the boy came back. I'm sorry, boy, said the tree, but I have nothing left to give you. My apples are gone. Well, my teeth are too weak, said the boy. My branches are gone, said the tree. You can't swing on them. I'm too old to swing from branches, said the boy. My trunk is gone, said the tree. You can't climb. I'm too tired to climb, said the boy. I'm sorry, sighed the tree. I wish that I could give you something, but I have nothing left and I'm just an old stump. I'm so sorry. I don't need much now, said the boy. Just a quiet place to sit and rest. I am very tired. Well, said the tree, straightening herself up as much as she could. Well, an old stump is good for sitting and resting. Come, boy, sit down, sit down and rest. And the boy did, and the tree was very happy. I've always loved this story. I've read it to my great nieces and nephews. And during the past semester at school, I watched an assigned video of a rabbi preaching a sermon on this book, The Giving Tree. And it brought to my mind two things. First of all, our sermons are much shorter than this rabbi, rabbi's 47-minute sermon. Um, secondly, he discussed that we should be considering not how much the tree gave and gave and loved and loved, but we should consider the boy who took and took and never said thank you nor told the tree how much he loved her. As I think of say, today's society, the rabbi was right. Uh, many give of themselves less than in the past, and many take more and more and more and take. I don't want to be political, but in all honesty, most of this taking arises with our leaders. We take sides. Both houses of Congress take a Republican or a Democratic side and follow their party's dictates, but ignore the wishes of their constituents, those who elected them. We take up arms. We have the right to, to get a license to carry a concealed weapon, and although Vermont does not have a stand your ground law, so many states have them, and um, so many young black gentlemen have been killed because of the stand your ground law. Uh, we take drugs. We take children away from their parents at the borders and lock them up in cages to sleep on space blankets on cement floors. We take lives by many means, by making life-saving medications too expensive to obtain, by the drug addiction epidemic, 
and by violence, mass shootings, especially in schools and houses of worship, a Walmart in El Paso, a gathering in Las Vegas, and a nightclub in Orlando. We take away support services. 750,000 poor lost access to food stamps this year. We take away other people's stuff. Every night during the Christmas season, this past Christmas season on the local news, I saw home security um, videos of packages being stolen from people's porches or entryways of their houses. Money is taken from lobbyists, and most important, the futures of our children, our grandchildren, my great nieces and nephews, will be taken away, especially by climate change and the COVID pandemic. I got stuck here when I was writing this because there were so many days that went by that I neither saw any good happenings on the news nor read about them. And finally, I saw a piece of a blog that spoke of some of the best facts of 2019. And it wasn't all the good things that have happened, but it called attention to many, some of them serious, some of them sweet. So here it is. Sea turtles are making a huge comeback with their populations increasing by 980% thanks to the Endangered Species Act. Sweden has rolled out a great new policy that blood donors get a text message whenever their blood saves a life. Seven eggs from the last two remaining northern white rhino have been successfully fertilized. This may save the species. The Netherlands covers hundreds of bus stops with plants, which they call green roofs, where bees can take refuge. San Francisco has a cuddle club, which unites senior people and senior dogs for companionship, exercise, and affection. Peru has made a commitment to stop searching for palm oil and stop des destroying their rainforest by 2021. The African Developmental Bank has initiated a solar project called Desert to Power, which means that they take solar panels and place them across the Sahara Desert. It's gonna supply 250 million people with power, 90 million of those people for the first time, and that, which will lift them out of poverty. South Korea is, order, is organizing daytime disco people uh, parties for people over 65 to tackle loneliness and dementia. Rice farmers around the world are using ducks instead of harmful pesticides. Ducks will feed on the insects and weeds without touching the plants. Renewable energy sources now account for one third of the global power. Baby African elephants are now being protected um, from being captured and sold to zoos and circuses. A Malawi female chief has annulled over 1,500 child marriages and sent the young girls back to school. Residents of a village in India um, celebrate the birth of a daughter by planting 111 trees every time a girl is born. They've planted more than 350,000 trees. And my favorite is that a supermarket in Thailand has rejected plastic packaging and now wraps all his produce in banana leaves. Um, in many cases, young people are leading the way uh, for climate change, notab notably Greta Thunberg. And for um, gun legislation, the adolescents from Stoneman Douglas High School have led the way for change. And of course, oh, I don't wanna say of course, our churches in Heartland, um, we do a mission trip every year in the past two years, we've gone to Puerto Rico. Um, they were withstanding the earthquakes and where they were supposed to put new roofs on houses from the hurricane two years ago. Um, couldn't be done because of the earthquakes on that part of the island. But they refurbished a church that was badly in need of repairs. They rebuilt new pews. They um, cleaned all the windows. They painted it. There still is hope in this world. And as the psalmist said, um, it was read a few minutes ago, we may have hope in God. Um, so in the greatest of hope, thanks be to God. Um, would you enjoy me? 
Would you join me in this responsive litany? God of life, whose life, whose love enfolds us and spirit fills us, we praise your holy name. God of joy, whose sunrise wakes us and sunset amazes us, we praise your holy name. God of hope, whose promise sustains us and power upholds us, we praise your holy name. God of love, whose patience humbles us and touch can heal us, we praise your holy name. God of peace, um, who breaks down barriers and walls that divide us, we praise your holy name. God of eternity, who has always loved us um, and who and by grace has saved us, we praise your holy name. And next will be hymn number 438, When Peace Like a River. to leave you with a fourfold Franciscan blessing. May God bless you with a restless discomfort about easy answers, half-truths, and superficial relationships, so that you may seek truth boldly and love deep within your heart. May God bless you with holy anger at injustice, oppression, and exploitation of people, so that you may work tirelessly for justice freedom, and peace among all people. May God bless you with the gift of tears 
to shed with those who suffer from pain, rejection, starvation, or the loss of all that they cherish, so that you may reach out your hand and comfort them and transform their pain into joy. And may God bless you with enough foolishness to bless that you to believe that you really can make a difference in this world so that you are able with God's grace to do what others claim cannot be done in the greatest of hope thanks be to God <laughs>